Uh, welcome everyone to Dental Coffee with. We are today uh, here from Dental Surgery Channel. We are today with a very impressive uh, doctor. He is a from Japan, originally from Japan. He is a clinical assistant professor in New York University. His name is Dr. Takanori Suzuki. Dr. Takanori Suzuki, how are you? How are you? Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. When was the last time that we met, actually? I have no idea. Maybe I was drunk anyway. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very short memory, you know, like a fish memory, actually. <laughs> so I think, it was, I think it was in 2012 uh, yeah. because I, I, I went to NYU to do my period in 2011. Ah, yeah, so I actually cool. remember. Mm. And, and you helped me. You helped me. Dr. Takanori Suzuki was the one, actually, uh, by that time, were you already a, a, a professor? Were you a yeah. faculty already or not? You that were already time, faculty by yeah, that time. Yeah, I was faculty since 2012, I think. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. Okay, yes, yes. Exactly the year actually that I was there. And yeah. I had the chance and I had the opportunity to know you, man. And, and I think that it was amazing. I still mm. remember the how you record the surgery that we did, remember? <laughs> yeah, that we, yeah, stayed, yeah. That that we stayed until 10.30 p.m. Mm. and you were recording everything and then you did the whole video yeah, uh, I, of the surgery. That can be better now. <laughs> I really appreciate How is everything in New York City? It's pretty nice. Now it's uh, too hot this summer, but yeah, last week was uh, some sort of outrage and blackout, but yeah, pretty good, okay. man. Yeah. All right. Was it cold this winter? Was it as always cold? Yes. When the winter gonna be like a minus, sometime twenty. Last year was a wow. pretty cold. Then this summer, right now, is at twenty eight or thirty. Mm -hmm. So up and down, up and down. It's New York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's speak a little about your your story, uh, mm -hmm. Takanori Suzuki. Uh, we're gonna talk about. Taka or Takanori Suzuki? How do you want me to, to call you for the audience? But usually people call me Dr. Taka because I'm using Dr. Taka for my like, Instagram too. Okay, great, great. Your Instagram, your Instagram, by the way, and for the community yeah. that actually follow Dental Coffee with, uh, oh. it's amazing. Uh, Dr. Takanori Suzuki, Dr. Taka uh, makes amazing, uh, amazing pictures and he has a, uh, an amazing... Uh, it develops an amazing dental photography and your cases are very well documented very professionally documented one of the things that impressed me the most is the passion that you put on every single documentation of your case mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that is important for the people is to know that uh, your background is very extensive he is a uh, author and co-author of many many articles and publications when was the first publication? Which was the year, the, the first year of your publication? And what, what, what was the publication about? I, when, after I graduated to the dental school in Japan, at Tokyo, and then I became a, kind of graduate of a PhD course of the operative dentistry. Then I was investigating, investigating like a dental bonding system, or how we're going to live with a carrier affected dentine using rotary cutting device or a laser. So first publication could be around 2002 and three about could be different bonding system to affect to the like a long term, like a tensile bond strength or the dye penetration test. So that was the first publication I remember. Mm -hmm. But nothing, Interesting. Interesting. Nothing, nothing related to with what I'm doing right now. Like a, not surgery, not perio, not the implant, bone graft. But that time was uh, more, it was with material. Okay, biomaterials and restorative. More uh, focused on um, biomaterials and restorative. When did you switch to uh, periodontics and implant dentistry? When so did you. Well, since I was here, uh, which uh, 2009 or 8, uh, 2008, I came here. And then I started to study about implant dentistry because of the Dennis Turner. Uh, he was uh, my previous uh, chairman of the periodontology and the implant dentistry. So I took his lecture course the, twice a week. I still remember 
Tuesday and Thursday, and they started from, I think, 7 or something, very early in the morning. But uh, so many people are there, and they packed the room, like more than 200 people, that's I remember. Then then I feel something interest about the implant dentistry. And also, then Istana asked me to join the implant program. Then I started. That was the uh, yeah, beginning of the, my implant dentistry. You must have you must have felt very honored to 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 know that Dr. Tarno and I think that you were very lucky and uh, but you deserve it because I I when I met you one of the things that impressed me most from you was the uh, as I said before the passion that you put on every single uh, thing that you do in dentistry and it must be it, it, it must have been very amazing to to join Dr. Tarno in, yeah. in Perio and Implant right. That was very interesting, and also his character, how he's going to talk to people. Like, every time after finishing his lecture, I feel I become more, more knowledgeable. Every time I feel knowledgeable, and I feel I should know more. So mm-hmm. that's what the more interest. So I am really appreciate what she, he did to me, and then, yeah, so that's, I can tell. Uh, one of the things that also uh, it's important for the people, um, you're not only a researcher, you're not only a, a clinical assistant professor, um, but you are a very experienced surgeon. Uh, I see here that one of the uh, most interesting research that you did was the stage-rich splitting technique, mm. a, a managed extended scenario and membrane perforation during maxillary sinus, Implant placement in maxillary incisive canal. Yeah, the new approach. I re- I remember that you presented uh, one of these presentations in a New York University Study Club. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, I actually, as soon as I saw your presentation, I remember that I had a patient that I needed to do the same thing, and that's what I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember that I placed the implant where you told me to place it, <laughs> and uh, it was uh, it was completely successful. Oh, and good. I really appreciate uh, that day that I was there, uh, that I listened to your presentation because it helped me. It helped me a lot. So, um, in going back to the uh, surgery, uh, which uh, have you have you found in in New York University? We all know New York University as one of the best places to learn uh, periodontics and implant dentistry. Uh, not only because of all the history that New York University has. But mm-hmm. also because all the data, all the patients that you have treated there, and many patients have been treated in, in your university. And one of the things that I remember most was mm-hmm. the amount of the different biomaterials that we had available, uh, mm-hmm. the different implants that we could uh, use. And that was a very good training for, for the students, right? Mm-hmm. Going to New York University's experience. Yeah, so... Ma- now it's really changing because of the the chairman changed, administrator changed. They are more talking about which company gonna work with the, the university. So now NYU, but we still have some like a new system we started to use, which is a Swedish Martina. And that uh-huh. one, yeah, what we started to use, and we did the research as well. And um, mainly we are using maybe nine to ten system. But when I was a student. I think there are like a 30 or 40 different companies, surgical nice. suite. That was a very crazy stuff that I remember that. Yeah. But now, uh, and, nine to 10, yeah. So, um, it, it, which, is, which is the most challenging case, uh, Dr. Taka, that you have been in front of? Uh, do you remember from among all those cases, amazing cases that you have been in front of? Uh, uh, do you remember one that actually shocked me the most, shocked you the most? Like saying, oh, wow, I have to fix this. One of the difficult case, I did many stuff, but uh, one of the things is maybe lower mandibular for vertical region mutation is uh, one of the difficult procedures, I think. So you have to know the soft tissue management and you have to know the kind of the positioning of the inferior alveolar nerve on the mental. And also how to release in deep in soft tissue, and especially how you're gonna sterilize in the graft or membrane is uh, you need to have a good surgical skill and knowledge as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. 
and um, which which uh, basically when you're doing big surgeries, when you're doing uh, big regenerative procedures, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a, like a specific protocol, for example, or do you follow? Uh, any guideline or do you address the case to the latest publications or do you have your own protocol that you develop or um, is it is there anything that you actually follow and say you know in this case I'm going to do this or in this case I'm going to do that yeah I like actually Urban's technique for the lower mandibular GBR case uh, and, mm -hmm. but only one thing I'm not follow his procedure is I do so tissue proceed the surgery management before the GBR. So, mm -hmm. if you see, uh, like a uh, home lane one's article said, like if the flap thickness is thin, like less than three millimeter, or collagen tissue width is less than three millimeter, so that kind of case are easy to expose, like, uh, so that chance of the exposure, the he sense. Mm -hmm. So that's, I don't want, so that's why all the GBR, especially I'm planning to a big horizontal, or it could be any vertical GBR, I do the soft tissue management, especially fridge graft, to gain the more, not only keratin tissue, attached in chiba. They have to be deep, like a vestibule, so that we like to gain before, beforehand. Do you, do you use like specific instrumentation in NYU, for example? Um, I, I, I saw some uh, Joseph Chopin um, uh, periosteal uh, uh, pullers, you know, like this, uh, the ones that actually you comb the you comb, you brush the preosteum, and you release the flap from the from the from the buckle. Yeah, there are some like instruments such as uh, chikurons, that periosteum like an elevator. Have you ever used that one, like a brushing one? Yes, I I, I saw I saw Joseph Chukrun presenting that uh, surgical kit, and I, I don't know if you ever used it because I don't know it, it, up to which point it's it's really useful to that, to, that to the, brush. I, Brush, I think, the very, very easy to use, but especially nearby the inferior alveolar nerve, lower mandibular area, uh, the mental uh -huh. area. That area is pretty good because of the the inferior alveolar nerve is going to expose the mental and going inside the soft tissue, you frap. And then when you make a releasing, the chance of the cut the branch of the inferior alveolar nerve. But if you're using that instrument, uh, I think we can avoid the damage in the branch of the inferior area now. So, so for me, right. that I can approach myself, but I have to be more careful. That means that it takes a more time for surgery, but if I have that instrument, it can be finished much faster. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Because I, one of the things that I remember also was that um, nearby the area of the exit of the inferior area nerve, the Newtonian nerve, mm -hmm. uh, the cut of the periosteum um, you know, they explained to me that it should be very superficial in order to avoid to cut the um, uh, the nerve, actually, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, for example, if you are really, really superficial at that area and you make the loop, if, if the loop is coming up, is coming up and it's, it's, it's getting into the soft tissue, like leaving the periosteum, getting into the soft tissue, right? Yeah. And you make the superficial cut and then you go all the way above that exit, Maybe you can avoid also by making that superficial periosteal release cut. Uh, uh, maybe you could also um, um, avoid the cutting of the inferior vernal nerve, right? Yeah, that's true. So I like Londa's article, and I forgot the year. They, I think they published an IJPLD or could be implant dentistry. And uh, he was explaining in his article, and then uh, by using something brushing motion to elevate in superficial periosteum from the posterior to the anterior. But also one of the different articles saying using the finger. You put a finger and put in the like a jaw and then bring up the, all the tissue and the more coronary. That also right. uh, things maybe you can use as an instrument. Mm -hmm. think, okay, true. Finger can be true and very soft. Uh, and very soft and very safe, right? Because yeah. your finger is it's soft, it's it's yeah. round edge, so there is no there is no uh, risk of 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 uh, uh, cutting anything. Yeah, one of right. the things when I was a student in NYU, actually, the, he did it that way, but he was always asking me, 
you have to close your eyes. You don't want to say this one. <laughs> <laughs> you when I see it, uh, your index finger was a lower jaw and they bring up all the tissue going up. So that, <laughs> <laughs> that was, I was a student. So it's too, too, I was so sensitive that time. But anyway. Yeah. Right, right. But I mean, you were a student, so you were safe, right? You yeah. were, you had someone right behind you yeah. to take the responsibilities. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a memory. Very good, very good. Going back, going back to the uh, maxillary sinus, for example, maxillary okay. sinus um, uh, pathology and maxillary sinus technique. Um, uh, do you use do you use uh, at the maxillary sinus? Mm -hmm. I, I have a course in maxillary sinus. Um, that I did, I did some hands-on as well, uh, um, but especially I, I wanted to explain the sinus lift and I have some dental uh, uh, sinus lift course uh -huh. on the web. And it's, it's, it's very interesting that you are one of the most experienced persons in sinus lift uh -huh. and you know a lot in sinus lift. I want to appreciate and want to thank you for letting me use some of your Uh, slides and some of your cases, especially when when you uh, presented the case in your Instagram account, mm -hmm. that actually uh, there was an osteotome technique that was used uh, uh, too much. It was the, the bone was pushed too much. There was mm -hmm. just a few millimeters of remnant uh, uh, bone in height, and they basically inserted all the bone, all the alveolar bone inside the sinus, and that bone became infected. And then some yeah. like implants also became infected and everything up at the end developed, mm. developed into a, a complication. Mm. Uh, what would you consider would be interesting for the people that want to do sinus lift? Uh, do you have, for example, any course, any hands-on, any, anything that you are going to present that talks about uh, sinus lift that you uh, think that people should know? So... First, like uh, understanding anatomy for sure, and then uh, recently, what I'm focusing on is uh, more bone. Well, how much like a patient have a bone? How much cortical bone? So that was uh, for me the more focusing because of the if I'm gonna see many complications happening the long time, such as like a ten year after the functioning, there are such as periimplantitis and the infection going to be the sinus, and then. Mm -hmm. That kind of case, if the bone graft is a bios, it's a easy to get infection and then spread it and then easy to lose. Then I was thinking, if this bone gonna be, if they have a more vital bone, by using any like uh, autograft or autograft, doesn't matter. Then if they have a vital bone, they have a vascularity, it could be we can prevent more like uh, catastrophic failure, such as periimplantitis. Uh, That I was thinking, and also mm -hmm. more importantly, is actually the presence of the cortical bone. If there's no good cortical bone on the coronal part of the implant, and then once patient have a minor infection, I think infection is easy to go down and to remove all the bone around the implant. That's how I feel it. That's very interesting. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in in in, up, in upper maxilla, you have a very thin cortical bone compared to uh, lower maxilla, right? Yeah. So, like or, originally, you're going to end up, uh, uh, you know, um, having less amount of cortical bone, which is structural bone, and more uh, uh, thicker bone uh, that might compensate that uh, bone loss when the preimplantitis develops. It's yeah. very interesting what you're what you're saying especially uh, talking about the uh, sinograft material or bios in this case mm -hmm. inside the sinus. I've also addressed some uh, implant failures uh, by using sometimes sinograft, which was something that everybody wanted to do because they wanted to see some radio uh thing inside the sinus, right? And they wanted mm -hmm. to drill inside the sinus something very strong, like yeah. a rock. Mm -hmm. But uh, then you would realize that that rock is uh, 80% is non-vital bone, mm -hmm. right? And then it, it, it might get some you know, like 30 or 40% of vital bone in, in 20 years from, from that day. And in 20 years, can, many things can happen. Mm -hmm. And having some non-vital bone inside the sinus is a risk. And I, I, it's, it's very good that you actually address this and you actually say this because the people uh, uh, keep using mm -hmm. a lot of sinograft and a lot of bios. We have nothing against bios. Bios is a, very, is a great biomaterial. Yeah, uh, it's a great uh, sinograft. Mm -hmm. uh, right, but uh, in cases like the maxillary sinus, sometimes it's a little bit risky to use it inside the sinus. 
So very interesting, Taka. Mm -hmm. Taka, um, uh, going back to, for example, some soft tissue management and to finish a little bit your interview and having this amazing overview about the uh, mm -hmm. most updated techniques that you use. Uh, going back to uh, uh, or getting into the soft tissue management, mm -hmm. um, you all know that you coverage, uh, you know, Miller class, uh, one, two, three, etc. Uh, but basically, what kind of uh, technique, uh, let's say, for example, that you have a Miller class one, class one Miller uh, real recession, you have a recession, uh, uh, Miller class one. Yeah, by, the uh, way, you... by the way, Miller classification there disappeared already. Really? Yeah, it's, now it's Cairo's okay. classification. Can you say, say it again? Say it again, please. The classification from the Cairo, C A I R O, the Cairo. Okay. So now, okay. So now, the, hmm. now this, yes, this, yes, yes. this uh, the author is uh, kind of the um, making the new classification of the root coverage procedure. All right. So, now so we have to uh, follow that. The yeah, publication is uh, Mirror. We are not using Mirror. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All Actually, right. something so, makes sense because of if you want to see the inclusion criteria and the media classification class one and class two is almost the same, right? The result. Right. Yeah. Yes. So if you want to see the Kairos classification one, I is say, the, including uh, media class one too. Okay. And how many classifications do you have in the Kairos classification? There are actually, many... actually four classification, but there are subcategory of the positioning of the uh, cement enamel junction and then shape of the like a more like a, like a grave or the, you can easy to identify that the difference between the enamel and the root so there are something like a sub classification but if you want to read that that's good like it's more sense very interesting we're going to post it with the podcast we're going to post a little bit of information mm -hmm. about bibliography as well mm -hmm. uh, for the for the community yeah. And um, going back to the to, to the techniques that okay. uh, today, there is kind of a Zucchelli versus uh, tunneling, right? Like uh, the original classical root coverage from Zucchelli mm -hmm. that everybody is like uh, pushing forward uh, compared to the old trend uh, tunneling technique from Pat Allen or mm -hmm. some other uh, yeah. uh, uh, researchers mm -hmm. and also the pinhole technique and this. But which would you consider is the safest way to treat the root coverage for a person that actually does not have too much experience mm -hmm. and wants to obviously to get a little bit of uh, you know a technique and 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 and, and thinking about taking a either a, a post grade program or something. But if someone wants to start with a case a simple case, would you would you recommend to go for minimally invasive tunneling techniques, or would you go for the classical approach and then experience some new trends? For first, the tunneling technique is a minimal invasive, but you have to have a right instrument or you have to understand the patient anatomy because of the root area is more prominent and between root can be concavity. So you have to, the instrument has to reach. The if some perforation is happen, they're going to be a big issue. So my recommendation for the like a beginner for the root coverage procedure, I like to follow them to follow the Zucchelli's way. Like it should be open the flap and then by the bilaterally technique and then to bring the coronary, coronary, ad, uh, coronary advanced flap. I think that procedure could be easy to manage the flap. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of harvesting connected tissue graft, yeah. would you consider that tuberosity? Uh, palette, uh, which one would you go to? Like, for example, that you have both cases mm -hmm. and, and uh, you have uh, both areas that are available. Mm -hmm. And you want to do the Zucchelli's technique, for example, that he grabs a connected tissue graft out of the free gingival graft. Yeah. And you want to go, do you want to go to that, that, that situation? Mm -hmm. Would you go, for example, for to, to the tuberosity or would you go to the palate? If you want to go up the palate, the tuberosity is a good tissue for the gaining the amount of the tissue, but the problem is uh, they are so dense, and after they deliver the graft, the tissue getting more white. So if you're gonna, if you're expecting the more aesthetic case, I think better to use the tissue. Okay. Hmm. All right. 
Great. And, and, and to finish this, would you, what would you think about uh, growth factor therapy in addition, to, um, uh, in addition to, to, to all these techniques, regenerative techniques, mm-hmm. like uh, mm-hmm. connective tissue graft or root coverage uh, and also guided bone regeneration? I know that these are completely different topics, but mm-hmm. would you consider the growth factor therapy an option to in addition to the technique that you use or to the, to the uh, surgical procedure? Or would you stick with the classical approach without using any growth factor therapy because it's enough uh, understanding the biology and managing properly the tissues? Yeah, because of their reason become uh, some bony defect. So if you're going to get rid of the reason, that can be regenerate. So this is one point. And then if you cannot recover that kind of defect and try to use the chemical mediator, and then that sometimes like uh, you cannot like uh, beyond the patient biology, which is a uh, kind of the it's it's not the same thing, but the kind of the making that cell turnover more faster. So that is things. So All right. yeah, All right. mm. perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think that uh, by 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 using uh, growth factor therapy. It, for me, in my personal experience, I've, I've experienced a lot of uh, fast healing and also uh, mm-hmm. the management, for example, in, in the uh, um, particulate bone, especially particulate bone, mm-hmm. has a very good handling and, and, and good handling, especially handling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I still remember when I was in NYU that we used to uh, use the, from um, Exatec, I think it was Exatec, it was the Regenoform, right? It was oh, the yeah. room temporary Regenoform. There was was really nice management. You could actually manage it and and and, and give all the shape of the defect of the ridge, and you could actually give all the uh, 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 potential shape that you wanted to achieve, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, the 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 regenerated site, yeah. and this is something that at least uh, with growth factor therapy I've, I've experienced as well mm-hmm. uh, in terms of managing the the, the bone graft. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Doctor Taka, yeah. uh, it's been it's been uh, uh, an, a very big honor mm-hmm. and a pleasure to have you in the interview. I think that uh, the people have known a lot of new things mm-hmm. uh, regarding the new trends, the new uh, um, the new the new trends, especially the most updated uh, trends in in in, in dentistry. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we just gave a little tip and a little trick. From a big mountain of the things that actually are uh, are hidden, right? Because this is just a, a small dot compared to the mountain that is. But I really appreciate, and the community is going to be very, very grateful that I actually had the chance to listen to you, okay. uh, to listen to your experience. And I want to thank you very, very much for being uh, here. I hope that uh, did you take the coffee at the end, or or it's just. Did no, you? there are no coffee shop no. here, so I had to go in. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the school. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Next okay. time, I'll have a coffee and then we talk together. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to be probably, probably, I don't know if I will see you in uh, in Japan or in New York. Uh, in Mallorca. That don't... Oh, in Mallorca as well. Mm-hmm. In Mallorca, I've always wanted to to bring all the uh, new university staff here yeah. to Mallorca. Mm-hmm. Dr. Taka, yeah. my friend, it was such a pleasure to have you, man. I, I, I really appreciate every single thing that you have done for me <laughs> so far. And, and until the end, you have uh, showed me your, the group friendship that you have. Okay. I want to thank you very, very much for being there and for uh, letting me steal 30 minutes of your time, of your busy time. Really in your Thank you, Nico, for the. It was nice to see you, and uh, nice to talk to you, man. <laughs> Thank you so much, Takanori. Uh, I'm looking forward to see you very soon. Yeah, and I'm sure all the community is going to be very happy to listen to you, right? Right. Thank you so much, Taka. So we'll see you the next time. Next, next time, sorry. Yeah, for the next topic, right? For the next topic, mm-hmm. uh, obviously we're going to have a next topic, mm-hmm. and uh, we will prepare uh, a very interesting topic uh, that we will prepare it together uh, to impress the uh, community. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, Taka. Thank you so much. All right. So maybe midnight in the Mallorca. So have a good night. 
You too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ciao. Thank you. Bye bye, Taika. Thanks. <laughs>